Hello, guys. I'm Destiny Otto, and I will be completing the remaining part of this course. We couldn't complete this course in um, uh, last week as we, um, because of time limitation, we couldn't finish the app. So I'm going to be finishing up our app, and I'm going to show you how to add some cool features to your app. And then um, finally, I'm going to be showing you how to convert it to an executable, a standalone executable file. Um, but before that, let me just show you the completed app and how it works. So, um, so uh, here is the completed app. I want to guess you can see my screen. Oh, cool, right? So, and then you could see this icon logo here. Some of you asked how, if it's possible to remove the, or change the fetish logo. So that is the Kinta's default logo. You could always change it. So you could see SV logo very, very, very tiny here. And then um, you could see the menu bar. So interesting, we have all this, and then we have this, we have the plot of this, and we have help. Then we also, you could see another feature here, which is, um, called the combo box so we use combo box for this and then um, you could select one of these correlations however i deliberately did not um include um formulas for this because uh the goal is to keep the um the course simple and short right so i only use standing so all the formulas we'll be using are basically standings except for viscosity most of the formulas we'll be using for this will be for will be standing correlation. So, um, um, however, one limitation of this, my wonderful PVT calculator was the Z factor. I deliberately decided or wanted to keep it simple. So I actually uh, made it so that you will have to supply a Z factor by yourself. So you have to supply a Z factor by yourself. So um, if you use Kaklet, see what it outputs as calculations um, at its calculation at this value of pressure. And then if you want to run SIM uh, at various pressure, it steps down the pressure by 100 up to, uh, I think the lowest is 100. So at that point, um, it stops. So that is it. And then you could use the plot feature. Yes, you could see this. And then if you want to plot another one, you could see this. And then if you feel like you need, want to plot a third one, <laughs> so here we go. So we have this and this and this. So this is how our app we function. Um, it's just a very simple one. So I'm going to show you, I hope I can do this in less than two hours. We are going to do everything that needs to be done. So um, I just did a little um, a little adjustment from what we did in the last class, um, just to arrange this and put this in order. So you could make yours even better than this. So let's go on. Uh, but before then, let me quickly show you in my slides the formulas that I used for this. Okay, fine. So here are the, the formulas. So this is the app, the completed app, and then these are the formulas. So we have this um, bubble points, and you could see it's dependent on solution gas oil ratio. It's also dependent on A, which is calculated here. So we have this as well, also dependent on solution gas oil ratio. And then we have solution gas oil ratio itself here, depending on X. Uh, which x is dependent on this and then api is here x is dependent on api so all these interconnected and interlinked formulas so basically we are making things easy by automating so that's basically what the automating is all about yeah making the calculations easy and um, just one way and easy going so fast um that's just what it's about so these are basically standings correlation, except for visco oil and gas viscosity. Oil viscosity is the big correlation we are using. And then gas viscosity, we are using the Gonzalez correlation. So these are what we have in our app or working with our app. So let's quickly go straight to my Jupyter notebook. Let's start writing our codes. Yes, it's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be amazing if you can hold along with me. So um, I've seen the amazing work some of you guys did. Um, some of you guys amazed me, I must confess. 
so it's very interesting and you guys did pretty well um 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 uh, i'm going to show you how to add this feature so we're going to start with um so basically these codes are what we all did in a, we did in our last uh similar to what we did in our last class only i only um adjusted some things a little bit um so that you could um so that it looks nicer so okay this wasn't there i'm going to show you what it's about so let's pull this off so that um i could show you what this is about okay good so uh this is what we have and um here is what we did in the last class and we did something like this uh let's run it again so we did something like this even if it's not exactly like this i had to um add just rearrange this whole thing and put it in order so this was what we did in the last class uh, one of my buttons is missing and uh, that's not fine so let me quickly put that again i probably have mistakenly deleted it uh that's b3 uh and that should be row two so yes it's there fine great so uh okay it's not yet here okay text close it should be here good so uh we have this as our app so can we move on now we can we can move on so we stopped here what else can we do first one thing we could change this icon and um, yeah just the same way we change the name so we are going to use a uh, window dot uh, icon bitmap one of the functions to change this uh One of the functions to change, I'm uh, sorry, um, or, or Tikinta functions. Um, so um, now, if you are, if you want to use an icon, if you want to use an icon, um, you have to um, have that icon on the same directory as as a dot i echo file on the same directory as you have your Python script. So um, don't worry, that is not a problem. You could always um, upload a picture on one of the online converters from um, .png or .jpg to .ico. Um, so here's my um, logo file, SP logo five. So let's quickly put that in. And then we have uh, SPE logo five .ico. So that will be uh, so ensure ensure you have it in this uh ensure you have it on the same directory now this is python practice uh folder and um, ensure it's on the image on the same directory so that is what i used here and let's quickly see what happens uh great Wait. So you could see this icon has changed to SP logo. So that is my image, but in .ico format. You go to icoconvert.com or, or converter.com, and um, you can get. Uh, you could convert your images online to ICO format. So um, um, that is it. So that is to change that icon. Then let's move on to other things more important. Um, another amazing feature. We are going to be using this app. The completed app another feature of the app is the combo box so we're going to add this combo box then after this uh we're going to add this text box we did something similar in the last class but i'm going to be using a simple a, a a simpler method which is the scroll text so because of that we are going to be importing a module called um a function from a module called scroll text so um we should be ready for that so um let's quickly do this um Let's first. We first of all, we have we have to import combo box from Tikinta. So from Tikinta dot tkk tkk import 
combo box yeah so that is what we need um to do that to uh, do that combo box so um here so we have um five entries this e11 is for the z factor from the app so let's quickly define one for the combo box sorry i did not label this appropriately so i'm going to okay so i'm going to do that um okay so i'm going to do that i'm going to use e uh let's say e12 let's give a variable name to our combo box and then we equal we equate it to um we equate it to uh combo combo box yeah combo box so um let's quickly um assign the combo box variable to it so combo box and then we want that combo box to be in our window so our window which we have already the window object which we have already defined so um let's quickly do this so if we have e e12 e12 dot um I think I've got a mistake somewhere. Okay, I just want to confirm that E12 is a correct variable. So, um, yeah, so we have this as our value. So, yeah, so, and then we equate this to, um, to what we want to put in, at, in our combo box. So we have this as, um, oh, I think this is the mystic combo box. Good. So, um, so here's what we want to put in. We want to put in standing, standing. We want to put in. Um, we want to put in um, Petrovsky fashard. Okay, let's put in Vasquez Berg first. Remember to put this in strings. Okay. Vasquez begs, and then we have a uh, um, Petrovsky fashard. Good. So um, with this, we can move on. And next thing, we just be to grid it into place. So it will dot grid, and then um, let's see the gridding position. Uh, here we have row one, row two, row three, row four. So it's row five, but column two. So let's quickly do that. Row five, row equals to five, column equals to two. So, uh, oh, well, we ha already have this in row five. So this could not, can we check this again? Okay, one, zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, so that should be row four, not row five, row four. Row four, that should be row four. And then let's see what happens to um, our combo box. Let's quickly see what happens. Good. Okay, we've made a mistake in importing our combo box. Um, let's quickly um, do this uh, here. Okay, great. Okay, I think we still we still made a mistake. Let's quickly change that to values, not value. Good. So let's move on. Oh, I didn't see that again. Please don't use dots. Um, use only this. Good. Good. So um, and you could see this. Uh, yeah. So it's not in the right position. Let's quickly put it with zero, one, K. Okay. So it's in column one, not column two. So let's quickly do that um, column one. Good. So with this, we are fine. Let's run and then we see what comes up. Good. So with this, you could choose this, aha. So um, if you want a default value,
this group this okay i think we are good to go i think i mistakenly paused that okay so we are good to go we have set up our combo box and um sorry let me run it we set up our combo box and we are great so um let's uh, the next thing to do will be to set up this table and then we move over to the menu so let's quickly do that so i've already written this here from ticking time ports scroll text so um that um scroll text is what we are going to be using for that table so let's quickly i think we we'll, should write it at the base of all this so let's quickly do this and um and um Okay, let's just go straight. Let's call it table one. Table one. Okay, good. So we are gonna do use. Remember, I told you about the scroll text. So we have the scroll text method or function in the scroll text module. So we have scroll text, scroll text dot scrolled. So take note of the uppercase. Uh, the second is uppercase scroll text good so uh take note of, you might want to take note of that and then um remember to pass window as one of the arguments <laughs> must be there if you want it to actually um be on your window uh your window um so um um Next, we could pass a height and um, we could pass a height, say 40, and let's say width in inches, say, um, say, say um, 65. So we are good to go. All we just need to do next is to grid our table into position. So when we grid it, this wall we've, we get. Um, so row, I'm going to be using row, I'm going to be starting from row seven and the column zero of course so with this wow <laughs> you just see what happened it's trying to stay stick only to one column so um and as a result of that as a result of the size we actually are allocated or assigned to it um the size we gave to it it's expanded the whole thing so one thing we could do is the column span so when we when we span through columns, um, I think this will get back in position. So let's let's do this quickly. Um, column span. So I introduced that in the in the first class, the column span. So let's say we are spanning through eight columns, and let's see what it looks like. Great. Okay, let's close this and the other opens immediately. Great, it's looking, it's now beginning to look like our upright. So um, this is what we've got. So um, the next thing to do is this. We are going to um, create a menu. Yeah, a menu bar for this. So um, let's quickly um, do that in a minute. Okay, I would like to put that code under here. So if you had followed the post I made on WhatsApp as regards various functions and uh, methods that work with Tikinta, you will see that the menu bar is menu is one of them. So to create a menu, menu bar will start with um, menu. Let's call it menu bar as a variable. You could call it anything. So and then menu starts capital, and then let's pass the window in here. So this is how you create a menu bar. So um, just like your ticking tights, your ticking tight window, you have to start and close with something, window.main loop. So we need to close with a, a, a configure, a kind of, okay, we're gonna close with, um, we're gonna close with a closing syntax. So we have menu, dot um menu um equal to uh menu bar 
um, but we need to put this into a window.config. This actually configures it and um, shows it up. Yeah. So that is it. So we'll create a menu in between these two. Um, but in, in the meantime, we need to start with a particular uh, one of the menu, I'll, I'll call it file menu because typical of uh, many apps, you always see the file section first, right? So let me just name it file menu and then I'll equate it to this. So yeah, menu, file menu. So um, we're gonna call it menu. Yeah, so we have, um, we have to pass in um, some arguments there. So um, basically, we are going to start with what we are the, we have already defined, which is the menu bar, and then let's use this. It's not really necessary, but um, I'll show you the function in a moment. So um, tear off, yeah. So um, with this, we are set to go. We are we are going to um, we are going to do this for um, three menus. So let's do let's do this for okay four menus rather. So we have this for these, and then we have again for these, and then um, five menu we have um, edit and we have uh, plot and we have help. So there are four of them. Yeah. So let's call this um, edit menu. Oh. Edit menu. And let's call this plot menu. Let's call this help menu. So um, we are good to go, uh, but we still need to add commands to the menu. So um, this is how we could do it. So we could use um, we, we could we could use the add command which is um which is this so file we could use file menu dot add command uh, method file menu dot add command dot add command and then we add our commands so you put it as a label basically um I'll show you why all that so mm, okay so if we start with okay let's start with new typically uh most i'll start with new <laughs> so let's start with new and then we are not yet giving it a command uh no command function we have not written a command function for it so it's not gonna do anything yet um then after that um still under this file menu we need to have um we need to have our um, other options in that file menu. So we have something like this uh, here, here, here. So we have new here, we have open save and the rest of them. So I'm just gonna do two of them. So, and then I'll let you, I'll probably get a code that would, the codes I've already written for that and we will run with that. So we have this, um, Add command again, and then we have label. Um, and then we have uh, open. This will not show yet if you run it because um, we have not cascade. We have not added a cascade section, so we need to cascade it first. Uh, yeah, nothing shows yet, but um, no, just be patient. Um, we are going to cascade. We're going to add a cascade function here. That's what will actually uh, bring it up. So uh, all you just need to do is to is window menu bar dot add cascade. Cascade. Okay. So um, and that will give us uh what we are looking for, but we need to put in the name. This is actually where we put in the name, the actual name of that particular menu. So that is why it doesn't show yet. So we have this file. Yes, 
So, and then we have menu equal to, we have already defined the menu to be a file menu. So that's good. So with this, if you run, you see your file option here. So we have created two of these. So um, you do same for edit, help, and the rest. But um, um, time I will not time will not permit me to do that. So one other thing I could just do is I was at, um, as I was advised, um, I will just get the codes I have written. Don't worry, this is just a typical way of doing all of every one of them. So I'm going to just quickly get the codes from another um, a book, another um, notebook where I've written them and paste them there so that I avoid as much as possible repetitive stuff. So here are there. So they're exactly the same thing and I don't have the time to repeat it. We are trying to keep the video as short as possible. So let's Let's paste this here. So I also promised, okay, this don't mind this do nothing. Um, let's, let's pull it all off. It's actually not, it's actually a function I was playing around with. Uh, I wrote a function, fun, function I was playing around with it. So, um, Okay, good. Okay, good. I try to avoid things that are repetitive just to to ensure that my time is not is um is used properly so okay great great so um this is our complete um so like i told you this it like i told you this is for example in the plot menu it's not important i'm going to show you only one one thing i, I was added in this whole thing so um sorry did i copy function oh shit i didn't see this earlier okay sorry about that i've not defined this it's one thing it's copied code from another notebook okay so let's go so now you will notice this from the plot. Um, this tier of symbol, it will always be there by default. So if you don't want it to show, you just put tier of equals to zero. So that is basically what we do with that tier of. It's not too, um, it's not so much of a problem. So let's put it back in our plot man. I want to see that tier of. Okay, so um, I think with this, we are good to go. Let's, we need to go straight to the back end. But before that, there's something I want to show you guys. Um, so let's go. There's something I want to show you guys. Um, if you check the app, we have this. Okay. We have this here at the top they are not in, included in the table um, you could just use label to insert this here um, so i'm go just going to do all in one line of code so let's go to our label section uh, let's go to our label section i'll use l12 for that l12 then equal to uh, label is wrong okay label window uh text so we have text equal to um so 
let's write it in this order. So we have first we have a serial number, then we have pressure, just a little trick I'm doing. Uh, we are trying to keep our simple, right? So um, uh, what else do we have there? We have dual arrow, oil VF, gas VF. Okay, dual arrow, oil VF. LFVF, gas, FVF, gas, FVF, and um, oil viscosity. City. So let's just abbreviate this, and then we have gas viscosity. Don't mind that it's just it's not really it's not really the best way to do it, but I think it's the simplest. So let's see what happens. Okay, we have to grid this here first, right? So L12 dot grid, and then we have our row to be equal to to row. Okay, no, that's row seven, row six, right? Oh, yeah. Row, row equal to six, that's the seventh row. And then we have a column equal to zero, of course. So um, we also need to span it across columns. So um, let's do eight, cross eight columns. So let's quickly run this and see what happens. Great, so here is what we have. Um, I could even extend it further to look something like uh, okay. Oops. Sorry, I don't expect it to write more than uh, 84 characters per line. Okay, good, great. So that is basically our. Uh, just, you could just do this yourself, adjust it until it gets to however you want. So um, we are done with that. Um, I think we are now good to go with the front. Okay, but before that, um, you, did you notice something here? I also missed that out. Did you notice this line here? You could put this, add this line here. So that's just what we call the separator line. So let's quickly add that in our, our menu, you could, Okay, it's already here in the code, so you just this function, this uh, method add separator. That is just all. That's what it does. Wherever you put it, anyone that comes below will be under. So here in the edit menu, you see it is coming first before all these other ones. So that's why you have it the way it is, uh, the way it is here. So we have edit. So great. Okay, we have tear, we have removed that tail for this help. That's why it's like that. So you could add it again for help to pull that off. Um, CR of zero. So good, great. So we don't want to see that again. Good, good, good. So um, we are almost set. So uh, we have made our front end more beautiful. So let's go straight to our back end. So I've created a file, an empty file. So we're going to start from here. Um, just in case we may need it, let's import math. Um, yeah, you import math because you may need some symbols, some sign and cosine stuff. <laughs> oh, of course, we don't need it, but I just we wouldn't use it in the formula, but in just in case we need it. So that is why we're importing math. So um, basically, what will be at this back end, it's either if you are using a database like SQL, you are connecting to a database, um, back end will be great for writing the SQL code. Um, but I'm going to be using my backends for formulas. So I'm going to write all our formulas. So let me quickly just um, show you this. OK, so remember, this is our formulas. So I'm not going to I'm going to put in only one. Then I'm going to show you how functions work in a, in a moment. And then I'm going to um, I'm going to show you how function works. And then I'm going to copy the codes. I'm going to, they're exactly the same, imputed the same way. It's just a repetition. It's just um, something you could easily do by yourself. So 
um, I'm going to show you impute only one of these and allow you to impute the rest yourself. So let me quickly do that. So let's go back to our Jupyter notebook. Okay, so this is um, how functions work in Python. Um, so generally, this is a general mathematics function. You know, f x of or f e of x and y. For example, is equals to let's say x raised to power two plus plus six y. Um, that is more like a function. So in Python, to, create, to write a function, we just need the def keyword, and then the, for example, the the variable name, or rather the function name. So if we call the function f, and then we need to specify the arguments of the function x and y. So that is it. So remember, you must always put your colon at the end, and then you see this indentation here and show you uh, whatever you're writing, whatever else you're writing that relates or that will be inside this function starts with this indentation. So um, um, if we want to put this in, we'll just write X and then we have, ast uh, sorry, asterisk two, uh, then we plus this to Y. So when writing a function, there are two things. You must either have declared the variable or you, um, the variable is an argument, or it's an argument in in the function. So either you put the var the um, the variables here as an argument, or as the key as the argument as an argument or keyword arguments, and then um, or you define it first. If you if you just put something, for example, z in this function, it's going to give you an error because you have not defined um, when you want to execute the function. Actually, you have not defined um, you have not defined z. So it's it's if you want to define z, you either define it this way, maybe put z is equals to something plus something that is already um, um, maybe for example z is equals to two y two y. So this it's better. So, uh, this is actually what is correct. So um, otherwise, z should be one of the arguments here. So that is it. So let's use this. Right. So um, if you are going to use this function, now this function returns something. Wants it to return something, so we we'll use the keyword return. So a function can um, must not actually use return. But if you want the function after doing everything to show you something, to show you an answer, for example, um, we could do this. <clears throat> okay, let's call this um, to create a little kind of difference. Let's call this um, fun, fun one function. And so we have, so return f. So this is what this function does. If you take this calculation and do this, and then returns f. So um, let's try this function now. To call the function, we need to write the function and then we pass in the arguments. So whatever we want X and Y to be, if we want X to be two and Y to be three and to see what happens, this is how it works. So with that, we pass, by the time we pass it, this in, it does this for us. Two raised to power two, that's four plus one, Y that is three and gives us seven. So that is it for functions. So you could call functions anywhere you call them, there will be, um, there will be, that will respond. <laughs> so um, they'll be there for you. So um, let's quickly do this. Uh, but more than that, if a function is in another script, um, you want to import it as a module. So you, you first import the script as a module then you put the name of that script dot that function. So don't worry, I'm going to do that. It's not a problem. I'm going to show you that when we get there. So let's quickly, um, having understood this, let's quickly um, write, let's quickly write, uh, um, let's quickly write, uh, let's start with API gravity. So for example, we want to define API gravity, API gravity. 
Okay, so what we just need, uh, let's pass in an argument, why not? So um, that is oil-specific oil, oil gravity. So um, this is the only argument it takes, right? And then we'll put our colon here, we put this here. So let's call this API equal to, this is a variable name, this is a function name. They're not the same, they're not expected to be the same. So they're not necessarily the same. So, um, um, so we have API equal to, um, of course, one for one point three, well, one for one point five my, over one for one point five over why not? Or um, minus one three one point five. So let's quickly use um, brackets for this. Okay. Good. So I think we are set. We are good to go. So our function generator should return should return API. So if you want to use this function, all you just need to do is to write the function name or call the function name API gravity, pass in the arguments, um, the, the necessary argument. Only one argument is needed here. If it was two, you use comma to separate them, three or four, as you'll see very soon in a second. So um, let's pass in, for example, we have an oil gravity of 0 0.8, and let's see what the API gravity will be. Okay, I think we have not entered in the name correctly. So the name, okay, sorry, we've not run this, uh, you have to run this uh, first. Okay, so the name is um, 45.375. So um, that is the API gravity rather. So we have this, you could pass in zero point, um, let's say 0 0.7, if the, this oil must be so light. So we have 70 API. So um, that is it. So um, that is how you pass a function. So we'll be using this and um, let's let's pass in the other, let's um, quickly put in one more function. And then um, uh, let me just show you how this whole this thing is done. And then we'll have to go in. So let's call this, um, let's use a hashtag to comment on this. And um, so that um, someone reading it a quote, we know that this is what we are trying to calculate here. So we have API gravity here. And then here, okay, I don't want to use a different cell. Uh, let it stay be there. So here we have, so there we have this. So let's start with a solution gas oil ratio, right? So we have, um, okay, I'm going to just, uh, let me just, I'm just going to get the formula from here. I've already written it down. Uh, okay. You could take your time to do that. Okay, let's get this. Good, great. So, yeah, so that is great. So, um, so this is my function, and I'm passing in four arguments, and then remember this x. Now look at this in this in this look at this. Let me quickly show you. You need to be careful with that, uh, particularly if you are new. To, if you are one of those pro, uh, uh, programming with Python for the first time, I'm very much aware we are so many. Of, there are so many of us who are using Python for the first time. So I'm I'm seeing the great work you're already doing. You're already doing amazing work. So um, so we have ROS um equal to this. So see this x um you have to pass. You have to uh, define the X before doing this, else it will give you an error. Remember I told you, um, you either define it or you are passing it in as an argument. So what I did here is to define this. Of course, we are using float, um, that's correct. Let's quickly do this for, you have to define the, um, the data type. Great. So let's use float to define the data type. You could use integer if it's not a calculation like this. You've already seen decimal points, decimal fractions, and all that. And uh, besides, uh, you don't want your program to um, to uh, approximate or uh, approximate, round up your 
values to the nearest integer. So please use integer the, 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 where it is necessary, where you just need one, two, three whole numbers like that. So, um, but in engineering calculations like this, that is not ex in exactly what we need. Of course, we may need them in some calculations, but generally um, we are using float. So um, let's get the formulas from that back end um, script already written. So it's just the same thing, just go through the same way, nothing new. And so we just write the whole back end. These are all the formulas that will govern our calculations. So let's paste all here. Uh, we don't need to define gas this twice. So, so this is once you've done this, uh, you are very much good to go. We don't need API twice too. Okay. So this is just all our, our, that will be in our backend for this particular work. So great, we are done with this. And um, we are done with this. I don't think we use that, but let's still have it there. So, uh, So we are doing a great job. What do you think? <laughs> so let's move on. Um, the next thing uh, will be to import our back end script. But you need this back end script to be in .py first. So um, what you could do, just um, save it as, you save as all, preferably download and then the python python.py file so let's quickly do that and um, when you download ensure that it's in the same directory as your or have to okay have to use i have to go there to ensure that's in the same directory this python practice folder that's the directory of my script so i have to go and pick up this um uh, this file from my downloads folder pvt back and then i'll take it straight to my uh this folder that is the directory where my codes are uh, of course you can see this great so uh yeah so um of course, you could see my um, um, here is it. You could see my um, two IPYMB files are located in this same directory. So let's move on. Okay, let's close this. Not needed. Well, it's not needed. Okay, so so let's go back to our front end and import our back end model. So import. Please take note. You have to write the name correctly. PVT front or back rather. PVT back. So that is basically what we are importing. So we are still good to go. So um, that's not, we are not yet done. So nothing is working yet. Nothing, nothing works. If you put in values, nothing works yet. Values, nothing works yet. Uh, sorry. Eight, seven. So don't think anything works. We have not given commands to the buttons. Okay. Nothing works. Good. So um, you have not given commands to the button, and that is what I would call the middle end. <laughs> but you don't need to um, put that in a different script. And even the back end, you really don't necessarily have to put it in a different script. But one good thing is um, your codes will actually be modularized in the sense that if you have a problem, it's easy for you to, since you are putting your code in modules, kind of modules, is it for you to locate where the problem is? If you're having a calculation problem, you could just, okay, something is wrong in the formulas, you go to the backside, uh, or something is wrong with the connection, with the database connection or something, you go to the backside, back end, and then you fix it up. So 
but I'm going to be writing my middle end codes here. So um, on this script, you could do all on this script, I mean, so um, it's just about, it's just about simplifying things and making things easier for, for us later. So um, let's quickly, um, let's quickly um, start writing our, in our codes, our start giving our commands. So we'll first write a command function and then for each of those three buttons that are at the, at the that is at the our front page of the app. So great guys. Um I'm gonna now um Great. So um, um, I'm, I'm going to now show you guys um, how we could do this. So first, it's simple. Um, just be just ensure you follow me. Um, be calm, be relaxed, just chill. Um, it's going to be it's going to be great. So um, it's already great, right? <laughs> so um, let's um, quickly do this. Um, it's simple, like I showed you last time. It's just go to your buttons and you um, put the command function. And um, okay, for this third button, button three, it's very simple. We are going to use um, command equal um, um, window dot close window dot destroy. This will close the window. So that is the first and the simplest of the buttons we are going to use. So with this closes the window. Yeah, so I don't want to close this yet, but um, the other one that pops up with the codes. So we could close this. So other buttons are not yet functional. And this is not because of the back end. Um, this is just because of this is a, is a method for, um, it's one of the ticking time methods for Closing windows. So, but other ones will just put in command dot e command equal to a particular function which we are going to define. So, let's just do this now. Let's start with defining the function. So, what we are doing is, as soon as this button is pressed, um, one th there are three there are three procedures to it. Number one, these values, whatever values here, should be picked or taken, and then. When these values are extracted, there should be there should be insert there should be um, imputed into the formulas, the backend formulas for calculations, and then after that they should be um, inserted into this. So that is the three step simple step we are going to be doing. So we are going to be writing a function that will be able to do that. So I love writing a function at the top. Uh, and, okay, but let's just. Do it anyway. Let's do it. So um, let's define a function. Uh, let's call it calculate command because um, the first button there we are doing for is the calculate. So let's name a function. This button here. Let's name a function that looks so much um, so easy to read that we could tell what this and that is for. So let's call this the calculate command function, and then we put this no argument. We pass this. So let's write this function. So. Basically, one who gets those parameters from here first, the first step to get these parameters from here first. And then when we get them, we move them to the back end or we use the back end formulas to perform calculations on them. And then we insert them here. So insert the answers here. So let's do this. Let's see how to get the back. The, this. How do we get this? It's very simple. We use the dot get command. Sorry, the dot get method. Um, so we come here to remember these are the entry boxes we have entry window text variable so e1 e2 e3 e4 e5 okay e4 then we have e11 and e12 uh, e5 is actually the output those one to calculate so um we are not going to be using get so this is e1 is the pressure e2 is the temperature e3 is the oil gravity E4 is the gas gravity, and um, 
11 and e12 e11 is a z factor and e12 is the combo is the combo so let's pick up all this uh, quick, as quickly as possible so pressure let's use p and then we pick it up um it's our variable let's use p and then we pick up um e1 dot get okay let's let's convert whatever has been gotten there to a float that's how you convert it to a float or to an integer if you want okay uh, yeah so um let's convert it to a float so uh then we have um e3 dot e1 rather dot get okay okay so this is how we get the values then uh we could repeat same for others So how many inputs do we have? I think five, one has to be, the, one is the com combo box. So we still need that. Uh, so this is T. So um, we are trying as much as possible to use letters and symbols that resembles our, the real life um, characters used to represent or the notation, notations used to represent these. Um, so we have oil gravity, gas gravity. Then we have, um, what do we have here? Combo, right? So let's use our um, core because we are talking about the particular correlation. So here we now have our Z, our Z factor. So let's use um, E1, this is E3, and this E4, and this is, um, um, this is, what do we use for our combo? E12 or E11, I think E12. Then this is 11. So let me just confirm that. Okay, good, great. So um, that is our combo. So we are very much good to go. Um, let's, um, the next thing we have to do after getting these values, the next thing we have to send them to the, or bring up the backend, call up the backend functions to um to actually do these calculations for us and how do we call up the backend functions um this is what we can do if for example we want to calculate api just write api here and then we use um we've already we've already imported this backend module here so we use pvt.back pvt back rather dot the particular function you are importing so let's call this um let's call this um uh, what do we call it okay let's start with api where is the api okay good api gravity so um we just do this api gravity let's copy this great so um this why not here whatever values the person imputes he gets to this why not and this why not is passed here so these calculations will be done the api won't be we are not imputing an api gravity but we need it to calculate the other uh, parameters so um so let's get that for um let's you know, one thing about functions, you have to enter them sequentially. When I say sequentially, um, um, you have to enter them in uh, in an order that um, you don't have any parameter missing. For example, if you enter if you enter bubble point before ROS, bubble point depends on ROS, so that will give you an error. You either have to um, define ROS first. There have to be something called ROS before you bring in. So let's bring in ROS, for example, and um, good. So uh, please don't put this. Okay. So at least we have this PT exactly the same way they are here. YG API. So we have API here already. So you don't pass. Don't put this. 
before this in the function, else you'll get an error. So um, it will tell you probably name error or, or, or something or the name not defined. So um, this is basically how, I'm not gonna spend time writing all this. I'm gonna just copy the codes, but it, I'm, I'm showing you basically this is how it looks. So let's copy the codes from where it's already written and um, paste it here so that we can be faster and not spend time over things you could do. So um, let's see how we do this. Okay, there are so many of them. So let's just get this. Um, it's exactly the same thing. Don't worry, it's exactly the same thing. I'm sure you get, you get this. Okay. So be careful with your indentation, it has to fall. Um, at four spaces from here. Yeah, so four spaces from there. So this is what will happen. All this calculation will be done simultaneously. Once you press this, once this function is called, how do you call the function? When you press that button, that button gives a command. That button is a command for this function to be executed. So quickly all the values are taken and all the values are calculated. And these are, the, these are what we are going to get, but they don't automatically show in the Tikinta app. You will have to insert them into those opening area, those areas that are open. Even if you are not using an entry box, you still have to insert it into. So, um, uh, you have you still have to insert it in those in a spe specific location or label you intend to, you um you intend it to be. So um. And that is very simple. We're gonna be using the insert method. So just um, just relax and follow. I hope you are following. So um, so let's go, let's use our insert method, but inserting we are gonna use these um, variables. So we have called E5, so we are gonna use E5 is the entry, we want it to be here. We, we are gonna use E5 dots, E5, dot insert so e5 dot insert so the first one there is gr solution gr so um, um how you put it in first of all um you need to um you need to pass in how this should be ordered so how do i mean um here in the app you have to um, if you don't put it, insert it where it could start from this other end, the values could start from this other end towards this way. So um, putting something like an end here will um, enable that to start from that other end. And then um, uh, we'll, I will prefer, we could just put a row, for example, a row is here, but I'll prefer we use a formatting method Formatting, we could do a lot of things. We, we could, um, a number of things for uh, most, most importantly, we could change the number of significant figures or decimal place of the values that is showing. But let's use, um, we're gonna use a placeholder, curly bracket, and we're gonna use the dot format method. And then we are going to now um, put um, what we have there, ROS. So um, let's put in, what format we want to do, starting with the colon. So if, for example, we, okay, we are going to stop here for a moment and take a break. I'm going to prepare another video, um, a part, a, a second part of this video. So, uh, okay, no, I don't think I'm going to do that. Uh, sorry about that. No need for that. Uh, I think we could take this, oh, okay. So we could take, we still have some time, but I wanted to prefer a second video.